Let's give a big round of applause for her first time appearance here at Spellfest. We thank her very much for being here with us. Aliki Barnstone. Hi, everyone. Thank you, James. James is such a wonderful person and, and just doing such a great service to the arts. Um, and I'm so happy to have been able to get to know you a little bit. Likewise. All right, so um, I'm gonna start with some ekphrastic poems. I got inspired. <laughs> Can everybody hear okay? Can everybody hear me? Um, my mother is a Greek Orthodox Unitarian Universalist, and my father is a fourth generation um, American Jew. So um, that's both a blessing and a curse. I invented this poet named Eva Victoria Pereira, who's a Sephardic Jew from Thessaloniki, and kind of brought my two parts of my um, heritage together, although my dad's family are Ashkenazi Jews, not Sephardic Jews. Um, but most people don't know that um, s about 70,000 Jews were murdered from Greece, and 50,000 of them were um, Sephardic Jews from Thessaloniki. And Eva Victoria Pereira um, is able to, in her imaginary biography, although this was a biography that that other people had too, um, was able to buy a false Christian identity, her family bought false Christian identities so they were able to leave Thessaloniki. Um, both sides of um, my family are, I come from refugees so I have particular fondness and concern and empathy for refugees. Um, but this poem is based on Chagall's painting, The Blue House, which you can see on my website, alikibarnstone.com. The Blue House. I can see a long way up here where the blue house is balanced on a bluff yellow with late summer fields that extend to the city. You can see me, for the door and the windows are open to air. I sit in a chair and hold a cup of tea. Or is that you I see inside? And is that me running downhill, away from the house, on the path lined with hip-high wheat? Looming high, larger above me, the closer I come, is the jumble of buildings, a white cross atop each sky-blue dome, the church enclosed by Byzantine battlements. Is that figure below the cathedral, almost too small to see, raising an arm toward the city in joy, or turning back to wave goodbye to the house? Why does the modest cottage seem so isolated from town? Why is it painted such a radiant blue? The wood looks like the glass of the evil eye, and the plains aren't square but ramshackle. The foundation is shored up against the hill on the brink. I can see the danger now. And yet the blue house invites us to look in, enter, have a seat, and drink a cup of tea that tastes too beautiful on the tongue when you exclaim, ah, the view. The house was not blue. My memory painted it the color of the morning sea. Look, out there far from shore, the fisherman is disappearing in his orange boat that floats along a gray smear of light marring the sapphire depths. In the impossible pigment is the day we have to leave for good to find other refuge. No, the house was not a hue in nature, sea or sky, or a precious stone. It was a color made by human hands, like a home. <laughs> Market Song. This is also a poem written in the voice of Eva. Market Song. 
Come on, ladies, come on, girls, come taste my olives, my little black pearls. Come on, buy greens from my fields. Hey, my eyes, hey, my soul, forget your grief. Everything's fresh, fresh, fresh. I've got arugula and spinach leaf. Freesia, red lettuce, celery, parsley, basil, dill. I've got the best quality. Hey, little girls, the best deals if you will buy from me. Wheel your cart over here, my sweetheart. Just pick today, 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 rosy grapes, black grapes, green grapes. Once we Greeks were slaves. Now we've escaped all that. Hey, lovely girls, look all so good. Once our lives in Greece were poor. Look here, fresh fruit right off the tree. Smell my oranges, my sweet pears, three kinds of apples and sticky black figs. Come on, ladies, come on, good wives, come to my stall, look at all I have. Sharpest, sharpest knives, mops and brooms, coffee pots and socks, dustpins, dustpins, dish towels and tablecloths, underwear, t-shirt, blouses, beautiful scarves. Hey ladies, hey girls, once all of us starved, and what did you eat today, and what will you cook? Come look, I have flowers, flowers, flowers. Come on, my golden one, my soul, my eyes. See these pinks in pots for your garden? They attract butterflies. Come, take my flowers for your table. I pick them today, today, today. No more slaves, no more lies. Come on, darling, come on, my soul. Eat my souvlaki hot from the coals. Listen, my sweethearts, my golden ones. Long ago, soldiers showed you their guns and took your jewels in the busiest city square. Hey, ladies, hey, little girls. Today, all's for sale in the open air. Before I taught at the University of Missouri, I taught at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. <clears throat> Although I feel more at home here, I miss Vegas just about every day. It was a weird, beautiful, strange, transformative place, and still is. Um, and it's gone completely sustainable with sun, uh, solar panels out in the desert. Wonderful. Take a deep breath. Of course, you are afraid to breathe of what enters you if you inhale fully. Smoke seeps from the car beside you. When you stop for red, you slyly observe the couple breathes together. Cigarettes punctu punctuate their speech, their bodies slouched against the gray interior. The cars idling ahead of you exhale too much. The sun is filtered by exhaust, exhausting you. You think of what is next to do and squeeze the steering wheel and hold your breath. Aghast, you can't help that you find the gases lovely, belly dancing there, beckoning and winking and wriggling on asphalt between puffing, lustful cars that sit expectant on their fat asses, drunk on our velocity. Oh, holy God, what if you felt your body? And what if you took a breath, the living form of it inside of you, and you felt the ghosts of cars inside you too, the giant neon guitar outside the hard rock cafe on the corner of paradise twanging amid your ribs and all the splendor of inanimate objects left you just as they had entered you. What if the couple enclosed in the car were no longer ugly to you, and all the oxygen coursing in our blood made you love them for an instant, made them perhaps glance over at you, perhaps not? 
the light changes to green adorned with halos of toxins. You look down at your splayed legs, admire them too. A pity you're impelled to take a breath, step gentle on the gas. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay. It's all the poems are marked, but too many of them are marked. <laughs> Here's the one I was looking for. First Amendment. You shall be free to wander in the woods and build a fire among the poplars and maples and worship the flame you the face you see in the flames. If you see no face, you will be free to pray to fire and give it your own name. If you lie down in leaves, if you smell their sweet decay and feel sparks under the earth, the worms aerating the soil, the seeds breaking from shells, lifting bald heads to atmosphere. If you look to up to decipher hieroglyphs, the galaxies, if stars reveal no absolute except abundant randomness, if you read the book of life and find no law of nature drafted by a deity, no law shall stop you returning to the city to broadcast your joy. If your speech is lawless, you will not violate the law. If you call on the people to assemble peaceably, if you unfurl the flags of disposition, you shall not be dispossessed. If you petition the government for redress, you will wander freely nonetheless. If you build a temple with no cross, no star, but a neon sign proclaiming no afterlife, no law shall decree religion. If you print a Bible others despise, your book will not be abridged. If you read the oracle and you see blood on the teeth of the leader, and if the forgetful legislators stumble behind him, the hand of law cannot compel you with slap or fist to alter your grievance. No handcuff, no black boot, if you assemble words according to your constitution. So um, in honor of my Jewish side, I went on a, a journey to get an adult bat mitzvah, and my joke is that a funny thing happened on the way to the bat mitzvah, and I converted to Christianity. Today is the Pentecost, so I'll read this poem called With God in the Morning. I can't go back to sleep, so I weep listening for a rhyme. For example, the morning dove sighs deep in my backyard. She doesn't sing. The Jehovah's Witnesses rap at my door. They don't ring my bell, in whose metal the word peace is cast. How sweet are these witnesses who stand at my threshold and do not pass through, who honor you with formal dress, expectant, smiling, their leaflets and Bibles held to their hearts. They apologize for waking me, though their mission is to wake me and leave me with a little flyer about why to read your word. They promise to return, just as you did. They know your name is Jehovah, but I wonder if you are a supernova contained in each letter of scripture, or are you my Casanova wandering across the globe, entering so many souls with your flesh and blood, pouring your light into their mouths with a kiss? Well, I don't know what I did. Sorry, God. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Forgiveness! <laughs> I, <laughs> I make coffee because I will not sleep. 
how can it be that I am not unique? How can it be that I am what I am, just like them, who know the answers so well? And now, holy Christ, the phone rings as if to answer my disbelief in answers. National Geographic offers me a free satellite map, a gift I can keep if only I will give a chance to a DVD of their highlights through the decades. A map from space. Could the charted world make me a way to travel to you? Would you take me in your arms again and again would we ascend to heavenly realms? I tell the woman reading from her script that I don't think I will accept her gift and my ridiculous voice cracks at the thought I might have told your witnesses the same, just as I beg now for forgiveness and ask, please, don't call again. That's okay, you're okay, she says, blessing me in her way. Have a good day. And then, dear God, I hang up the phone. (laughs) 